So, I hear you guys like my tone. Last week I posted a cover of Icarus Lives by Periphery on my Instagram page. Because I am a hack who ran out of creative verve years ago. While that cover attracted an average amount of views for my page, I did notice a couple of comments and even a few DMs asking me about my guitar tone. So for this video, I thought it might be interesting to walk you through the process of achieving that tone, including the gear. Oh my fucking God. Including the gear. <laughs> I might like this. <sighs> including the gear, plugins, and EQ techniques used. Let's check it out. The guitar used in that video is my Strandberg Bowden seven string standard. Uh, I have modified this guitar with Tosin Abasi's signature Fishman Fluence pickups. Uh, for that video, I used the bridge pickup in voice one. Yeah. Hello. I'm sorry. It's okay. What's up? I was going to show you something real yeah. quick. What did you want to show me? I. There's a mystery in the bathroom that I... A mystery in the bathroom? <laughs> I don't know how else to... Okay, look at this. That is a penis drawn in pencil on the wall. From what I could gather online, voice one for this pickup is the standard Fishman Fluence modern active voice, but with added low end. I have strung this guitar with a custom set of strings from Stringjoy. Now the actual string gauges aren't particularly important, but for your guitar, make sure that one, your strings are fresh, dead strings sound like <laughs> and two, Make sure that you have strings that have the appropriate tension. You don't want your strings to be too flubby or you won't be able to get a good attack out of them. That's why I went for the custom set. I found that the gauges that my guitar originally came with were just a little too loose for my liking. What? Where do I fucking put these now? Get out of here. As far as picks, I like to use the Dunlop. Oh Jesus, what are these called? Oh my Lord, why? That's right. As far as picks, I like to use the Dunlop Prime Tone picks. I went for the 0.88 millimeter. Uh, I like the because they have a really, really sharp, bitey attack to them. And the 0.88 has just enough give to feel like it's compressing on my harder pick strokes, uh, but still thick enough to give me good picking control. Your pick and your strings are very, very important to your tone. If you use the wrong shape or wrong material pick, you won't get the proper attack and pick attack is a huge part of the sound of modern metal. Okay, go back to your home. As far as pedals go, I am boosting the front of my amp with a Direwolf Overdrive from Highwind Amplification. I highly recommend you check these guys out. It's a company, um, as far as I know, run by one guy, Jordan. He's really, really cool. Makes an amazing pedal. Uh, this is essentially a TS style pedal uh, with a little bit of flexibility. In this case, I am running the uh, clipping mode in asymmetrical, so it's a little bit less compressed and a little bit more open. Uh, I am running it with a little bit of extra low end push with the growl control. <coughs> I am running the blend on full, the level on full, and the tone control just under noon, I'd say around 11 o'clock. The bite control is in its stock position as is the boost control. I didn't want too much of a pick attack. So I didn't want to run the tone control or bite control too high on this pedal. I just wanted it to kind of tighten up my sound a little bit a little bit of growth. and uh, boost the front end of the amp with a little bit more volume. Next, we have the Zool noise gate from Fortin Amplification. Um, it's just a good noise gate. It's one knob, it's tight, it's pretty much everything you need. Uh, it, it, it's a fucking noise gate, what do you want from me? And in the effects loop of my amp, I'm running a rather interesting pedal. Now we'll get to the amp in a second, but mine is not equipped with a presence control. So even though the sound is really, really nice and balanced, I often feel like it lacks a little bit of sizzle. So I went out looking for an EQ pedal that I could run in the effects loop of the amp that would mimic a presence control. And I found this awesome Quebec EQ pedal from a company called Gooptech. She's Goop. Guptech. 
Goop Tech, hit me up in the comments. Let me know how you pronounce this, because... Uh, uh, okay, on the amp. In the video, I am using a Victory Kraken VX50. It's a really badass high gain two channel amplifier uh, with two distinct voices. Um, for that video, I'm using Voice 2, which is the kind of more aggressive, tight American high gain channel. Uh, I'll go ahead and pop up the amp settings I used in that video on the screen now. From there, the amp signal goes into my Two Notes Torpedo Captor 8 ohm. If you're not familiar with these, they are an impedance load box. Uh, what they do is provide a resistive load that mimics a guitar speaker for tube amplifiers so that you can record silently without frying your amp's transformer by unplugging the cabinet. All of that juicy signal then goes into my Focusrite Scarlett audio interface and runs into Ableton. Uh, the rest of the processing I do from there is done in software, so let's move over to the screen capture. Okay, so here we are in Ableton. Uh, now, the key night among you might notice that I'm kind of splitting up my processing. I'm doing some of it uh, here on the guitar track, and then I'm doing some more processing on a bus. The only reason I have it set up like this, even for a one track cover, is because when I track guitars for my own music, I actually double track the guitars and pan them hard left and right. And I like to do some of the processing on each of the tracks and then do a lot of the more specific bulk processing on the bus that affects both tracks at once. This allows me a little bit of flexibility when I'm processing. I can make small EQ changes to one side that I might not want to make to another or perhaps even change some speaker impulses. So the first plugin in our signal chain here is actually Neural DSP's most recent archetype, uh, the archetype Rebea. Now you'll notice here that I'm not actually using the amp or pedals or EQ section of this plugin. I'm basically using this for the impulse responses as a post power amp noise gate and a little bit of gain staging here. So moving over to the speaker impulses, uh, we are on cabinet three here. That's the high gain cabinet. <clears throat> From what I've been able to gather online, uh, these speakers are modeled after a set of Adam Nolly Get Goods private vintage 30 speakers. Uh, these are probably from around 2002 or 2003 and easily the smoothest sounding vintage 30s I've ever heard. Guys, if you don't pick up this plugin for anything else but the impulses, it'll be 100% worth it. These are just so rich and Again, smooth sounding. There's a nice shushy top end to them. It just rolls off all of the spiky frequencies that you're used to with a Vintage 30. Highly, Highly recommend it. Uh, anyway, so here are my settings. I'm using a uh, Dynamic 57. That's an SM57 mic here just outside of the cap edge. And then a, uh, another Dynamic mic, a 421 on the other speaker. Again, just outside of the cap edge at about half of the volume. Um, and that just gets this really, really nice thick tone uh, that has a good amount of forward presence to it without being too fatiguing or bitey. And the next plugin in our chain is going to be FabFilter Pro Q3. We're just doing some very, very gentle EQing here. I'm doing a low cut at 18 dBs per octave, um, right around 100 hertz. I like to do my low cuts 10 or 20 hertz under the fundamental pitch of my lowest string. In this case, the guitar was in drop A, which is 110 hertz. I could low cut it a little bit higher, and I probably would if this was one of my own mixes, uh, but this was an online cover, and I really wanted to get through some of that low-end chunk uh, that's present in these awesome pickups and this really, really thick amp tone. Um, after that, we have a sort of low-mid cut, um, really, really broad cut here, you can see, um, and we're just cutting out about 2 dBs, around 200 hertz. Uh, that helps get rid of some of that kind of boxy, cardboardy frequency and, and cut some of the mud as well. Um, we have a nearly inconsequential cut at around 700 hertz here. Um, that's just a really nasally gross frequency that I don't like uh, in guitars at all. It's a very wide cut, um, but that's just cutting down some of that really, really, again, nasally kind of honky mid-range. Um, 
then uh, I'm gonna kind of skip around a little bit here, but we have a cut at uh, just around 4,000 Hertz, cutting almost two dBs uh, for vintage 30 speakers and actually almost all distorted guitars. This is a really harsh, nasty frequency. You can see we're doing a very narrow cut here um, and it's just cutting out a lot of that fatiguing noise that you hear in high gain guitars. Uh, and then I have another cut right around 2000 Hertz. Uh, this one's just a little bit steeper. Um, and that makes room for a lot of other instruments in the mix. Um, for this cover, I could have probably left this cut out, but it's nearly standard for uh, all of my guitar tone now. Um, and it does cut out a little bit of the spiky frequencies that you're used to in like a Vintage 30 speaker. And then finally, we're doing a high cut right around 10,000, and that cuts out a lot of the unnecessary hiss that you'd get. Okay, so the next plugin in our chain here is FabFilter Pro MB. This is a multi-band compressor and all that's doing is clamping down on the palm mute sections uh, in my playing. Um, you could do this with an EQ and just cut out that frequency entirely, but it would leave your tone sounding really, really thin. And so having a multi-band compressor that just compresses between 85 to like 260 Hertz, um, allows it to be a little bit more dynamic. Uh, you know, you can still have that frequency present when you're not palm muting. And then when you really dig in and those palm mutes spike in volume, it just kind of tightens everything up. All right, moving on to our bus processing. Uh, first thing I'm doing right off the bat here is another instance of Pro Q3. And we're just notching out some of the nastier frequencies that tend to build up with distorted guitar. Uh, first one we're going to be looking at here is right around 650 to 700 hertz. Your mileage may vary. Uh, what you're going to want to do is sweep the frequency spectrum for something that sounds like a sonar pulse. Uh, around 3300 hertz, we have another fairly narrow cut. Uh, in this case, we're cutting about 4 dBs here. I literally cannot play guitar through my headphones without this frequency cut out. Just, it's so fatiguing. Um, and then moving up from there, all I've done is literally uh, double that frequency um, and do a smaller and narrower cut there. Now, the only reason I'm doing that is because anytime you um, really narrowly notch a frequency like this, it tends to emphasize uh, the next frequency up in the harmonic series. And so in this case, that's gonna be two times that frequency. So we're going from 3342 to 6684. And um, yeah, so just be careful when you're notching. Uh, the next bus plugin we have after that is the API 2500 stereo compressor from Waves. And then the last two plugins we have here, uh, we're using the S1 stereo imager from Waves. Uh, all this does is push the guitars a little bit further out in the audio spectrum. And finally, we're using an instance of Soothe. Um, this is another pretty ubiquitous plugin. I'm sure you've seen it all over the place. Um, it's basically a dynamic resonance suppressor. Um, I haven't changed anything here. I just popped into the presets, went to Guitar Electric, went to Guitar D-Spike, and boom, that was it. And that's it. You have my tone. Uh, keep in mind that tolerances on parts will vary a little bit, so try not to use my exact amp and EQ settings. Use your ears, listen, and uh, this should steer you in the right direction if you're looking to get that kind of sound. So, yeah, go make some music. Leave me alone. I I I'm done. <laughs>